Yeah, to give you how significant the problem is, so in the graph you can see the use of antibiotics, how it's increasing every year. So as you can see, tetracycline is the most used antibiotic um, and how the ABR is affecting the antibiotics. So basically, as you can see, the soil fertilized with the manure containing the antibiotics, with the antibiotic has more resistant genes than soil with the artificial fertilizers. And uh, concentration of antibiotics in manure can affect the interaction among strains and impact gene expression regulation. So what is our idea? So we are developing an enzyme, actually it's a novel enzyme called small lactase. So we are going to be expressing small lactase in a bacteria and then uh, basically wet lab activities to create the recombinant host, dry lab studies to increase enzyme efficiency. So we will be developing mutants, wet lab work to um, identify the most efficient mutant and then modeling studies and finding enzyme kinetics and then we will be passing on the remaining work to the next IGM team. So now we will be talking about dry lab. Moving on to dry lab, um, we know lactase is a widely used enzyme which has applications in bioremediation, uh, degradation of liquid and phenolic compounds. But for our project we are using uh, small lactase. Small lactase is a superior type of lactase obtained from Streptomyces coatsworts. So it has a gene size of about uh, 1029 base pairs and it has various advantages uh, because it has, a, it has a wider pH range, uh, 3 to 9, and it has more thermal stability, so it is uh, stable up to higher temperatures, uh, about, uh, like 70 degrees Celsius. Uh, apart from that, it has also uh, better activity and specificity compared to lactase. So lactase has three domains. Uh, the main difference uh, that there is is that lactase has three domains and small lactase has two domains. That's why it's called small lactase. So it's basically a variant of tetracycline and we're working with it because it's the most commonly used antibiotic in cold and cattle farms and is available over the counter. So small lactase is a homotrimer. It has three subunits and each subunit has two components that are crucial for the catalytic activity. The important point to note here is that the catalytic activity begins from the first problem, or T1 problem. So this entire thing is basically based on an oxidation reduction reaction, uh, where the small lactase oxidizes the tetracycline and in turn gets reduced um, in the process. So during reduction, uh, the Stephen copper will pass the electron to the other copper centers. So we identified some amino acids surrounding the T1 copper. These amino acids are about 10 angstroms or lesser, um, which is the main, so, so even copper is the main region for catalytic activity. So the three amino acids, histidine, histidine, and cysteine, are conserved throughout the lactase family. And apart from that, uh, there are several other amino acids of our interest, uh, whose importance will be discussed later in the presentation. Okay. So for our research, uh, there are two main points of interest that align with our aim, which is to increase the enzyme, act enzyme activity. Uh, one is the T1 copper and the surrounding amino acids, and the other is the binding cavity. So there are no concrete details about where exactly the binding cavity is located, uh, but then, but indeed, uh, it, there is a binding cleft located near uh, the T1 copper. So after extensive molecular docking uh, process, we try to find out which binding cleft is closest the T1 copper and is the most suitable one for our project. We'll move on to Yeah. So uh, why we are talking about uh, the mining site and the T1 copper site? Because obviously we have to create mutants to increase the efficiency of the enzyme and to make it more specific for tetracycline degradation. So in that case we cannot go the conventional way because it will take a lot of time. So basically we are focusing on two regions in the enzyme. The first is the T1 copper site and the amino acids which are surrounding that T1 copper. And the second is the binding site which is very, so according to literature as we have mentioned that, that is very close to the T1 copper site. So, uh, okay, so while introducing a mutation there are two important points to consider. The first is rolling. So for selecting the mutations, the first thing we consider is we did uh, multiple sequence alignment and we also look for some other uh, lattice sources 
where people are trying to degrade, although there are, there are very few literature support we have, but where people are trying to show that this enzyme can be used for antibiotic degradation. And what we found out is, if you can see the source which we are taking for small, small lattes, Leptomyces coli-correct, so bacteria, and you can see the residues here. What's the main difference here is, the second is also bacterial source, another thing are fungal sources. Isoleucine and chlorine is very common in all the sources except our source. So that's one point to consider. We'll discuss about it later. So, based on the hydrophobicity and the comparison MCA, we have selected few mutants, total 10 mutants, based on the theoretical data. Now, we'll, later on, we'll verify it uh, in trial. So, the, we have selected two double mutants and uh, most have point mutations. And the, base, uh, the basis behind this, so the first is, for example, here you can see fluorine 32 to isolation. So, it's basically uh, more hydrophobic amino acids we are putting here. The other mutants, there is one more point here uh, to mention that in many research papers we have mentioned that you can restructure the active site. If you are adding, if you are mutating with some uh, simple amino acids like glycine or alanine, you can restructure the active site to make it more specific for your substrate. So what we did is, for all the protein I showed you and the mutants, for the white line and the mutants, we did 25 nanoseconds simulation to stabilize the protein. And then we perform molecular doctrine using 4.2. What are the results? So you can see the best result we got for this double mutant, and there are other results also. So yeah. So finally, we have decided to choose these two mutants. These are our best results, and we are going with the first double mutant and this this particular mutant. So this is R induced mutation, R induced mutation based on the logic I explained, and this particular portion is basically. This is uh, reported in the literature where they found out that the activity uh, was increased 10 times. So we are, we are going to compare that both the double mutants. So this is going to be our control and this is going to be our We have an experiment with So this is a general workflow. So we have uh, identified the binding clip.